Hello everyone, it's Just a Dad. Today I'm going to do a review on this Narwhal Frio X Ultra Robot Vacuum Cleaner. So here's the base station. This is going to charge it and clean the mop pads, but it does not auto empty the dust bin. Up here, this is where you're going to fill the clean water tank up with clean water. And then after it washes the mop pad, this is where all the dirty water is going to go. So you are going to have to empty that out and refill that. Now underneath here, this is where the solution, it's going to auto mix the solution for you. So you simply just take the cover off and it just sits right there. Okay, so here I am filling the clean water tank up with water. Okay, let's empty the dirty water tank. This has been cleaning my house for about a week. Now I will have to rinse that out and wash that out once in a while. Okay, so up here we do have a touch screen that we can do different things with. We can just tell it to start cleaning, come to home, wash the mop pads. So I press the home button, that tells the robot to exit. So if you need to work on it, it's gonna come out here and park. So here's the front of the robot. It does have the bumper technology. It has a sensor. It has LiDAR for navigation that maps your house really good. Now, once in a while, you are gonna have to take this cover off. This is the dust bin. The base unit does not auto empty this. You are gonna have to take this out and throw that away. These are the ones that you throw away. It does have a reusable one. So you can put this one in here and then you would just simply take this out and empty it out, clean it up and then put it back. There is a big filter. This comes as a one big assembly, just like this. And it just slides down in there like that. Okay, let's flip the rob robot over. We've got these two side brushes. This is the, now I have not noticed any hair wrap on this. So it's, I think it's doing a pretty good job. Um, here are the actual mop pads. They're kind of, they're not a perfectly square, uh, circle that way it's supposed to kind of get a little bit wider because they're kind of a, a different size once in a while you are going to have to take these off you may have to replace them but you can also put these in the washing machine but the base unit has been washing these it's been doing a relatively good job now the robot can lower and raise these depending on if it's on carpet now inside the base unit it does charge it it fills up the robot with water and solution and then it also um, cleans the mop pads but once in a while you are going to take this out so you can see once in a while, I do have to take this over to the sink and give this a good cleaning. Okay, so it's got a really nice app that does a good job of mapping your house. You can give it different names. It kind of knows where the carpet is, but it's a good idea to show it where the carpet is with the app, divide it up into the different rooms. Now, if we click on, we can do vacuum and mop, vacuum then mop, or vacuum only. And we've got different levels that we can use. In the Frio mode, it's gonna automatically adjust according to how dirty everything is. Now we can go into settings and do different things like turn on and off the edge mode, smart, clean. Do not disturb is gonna be really important. You don't want this coming on in the middle of the night. It has high altitude mode, base station, smart drying. It's gonna dry the mop pads after it's done cleaning them with some hot air. Manage accessories. This is where you go in. It's gonna tell you when the dust bin this will actually tell you when the disposable dust bag needs to be replaced. So it's going to give you a reminder, the roller brush, the sensors. You go in there and you can reset that. Okay, let's tell it to go clean the kitchen right now. So all you're going to do, I'm going to do a room and hit clean. So the first thing it's going to do, it's going to wash the mop pads to get them nice and soaked and ready so it can start cleaning. Here we've got a bunch of crumbs for it to pick up and some muddy paw prints. We're gonna see how well it does. And even on some carpet, we're gonna watch it raise the mop pads when it comes to carpet. And so what you'll hear is you'll hear some water going down around the mop pads. It's gonna spin them, and then it's gonna suck the water out into the dirty water tank. That's what you're gonna hear. It takes about two minutes. And you can see there's some of the dirty water going into the dirty water tank. Okay, so it's all done washing the mop pads. Now it's gonna start vacuuming and mopping at the same time. Yeah, this is it's not very loud at all. About 64 dB when it's doing this. And it's putting down a lot of water. It is mopping pretty good. All right. So it's doing a good job getting underneath the kitchen cabinets with its side brushes.
Now once it does the perimeter of your room, then it starts to go back and forth to get the, in the middle of the room. Now that's pretty impressive, it picking up all that dirt. And so there's the, the first pass on the muddy paw prints was pretty good. So there's the muddy paw prints. Yeah, it smeared it a little bit. I can't believe how well it vacuums. There's the second muddy paw print. Yeah, it got most of it. With that kind of mud, it might be best to do two passes, but boy, that, I think it got all of it. And it's doing a really good job with these crumbs. Okay, so there it lifted the mop pads. Now it's gonna go on to carpet. Now here's where those muddy paw prints were. It did a really good job. Okay, so it's coming back to wash the mop pads. And the app is always really good at telling us exactly what it's doing. So it's washing the mop pads. Again, this is not very loud either. The base station, when it's washing the mop pads, is, you know, around 60. Okay, so now it's gonna go finish cleaning that carpet over there. See, it didn't wanna drag the mop pads that were dirty on the carpet, so it came back and cleaned them, and now it's gonna go do that carpet. So now it's gonna vacuum only. You know, it's doing a pretty good job vacuuming. And again, not too loud when it's just vacuuming. Now it is struggling. Some of the crumbs are kind of close to the carpet. When it was there, it kind of struggled. So maybe having it do two passes would help. But as far as when it's on the carpet, it's doing a decent job. Okay, so it says it's, it's all the way done. It's going to come back to the dock. And we know that because it says cleaning air is... Done. Okay, so you might have heard something. It calls air compression. And you're hearing it. It sounds like it's auto-emptying, but it's pushing that dirt to the side. Okay, now it's doing mop drying. So there's going to be a, a blower with hot air kicked on. It's not really loud and it's gonna dry that mop for about four hours. So what, what you heard is, it kicks on a fan to move that dirt and debris over to the side so that it can continue to pick up more. That's actually a pretty nice feature. Otherwise that dirt and material might just be sitting right here when it picks up. So what it does is it kicks on some kind of fan and forces that dirt and material kind of over to this corner so that it can still use this part of the filter inside there. That's what we heard. Again, the base unit does not auto empty into another chamber. All the dirt and material will always stay in this container and you'll have to replace this container. Yeah, here's kind of a picture on the box. Allows the robot to compress fluffy dust tightly, ensuring minimal noise and a seven week dust storage inside that bag. Okay, so under the report of it cleaning, we, we don't really get like obstacle. It doesn't show us like what the obstacles it encountered but it does say the cleaning mode, the strong cleaning mode was activated. It washed the mop, optimal route planned. Now what you do get is a picture on the map that shows you what it cleaned and it'll have different shades to let you know if it had, if it noticed, like see if it's more dark, that means there was more for it to clean and less dark means it wasn't as dirty. Okay, so we gotta do some more extensive testing. It's already gotten caught on this cable. So I really want to test its obstacle avoidance now. So it did have trouble. I got it cleaning carpet. And this thing retails for $1,400. All right, so it's definitely having a problem. So I really want to see how it does with a cable. And I've got some fake dog poop here. Again, this is $1,400. The obstacle avoidance, it, it does a good job. It just doesn't kind of tell you what it's doing. It doesn't give you a picture. It doesn't say I found an obstacle here. For the most part, it just avoids the obstacles and then um, finds its way back or you know finishes the job. 
I've got a pretty lots of things in this basement that can get in its way. That was the first cable that it encountered that I it was not able to get across because I normally do the cleaning and then um, I come back the next day and it's always in the base unit. So it, it's fine. It's always it always finds its way back. You'd be surprised the ro like the Roborock S8. I'll do I'll have it clean while I'm upstairs and then I it's always I come down here and it's not in its dock. It's somewhere else. It's stuck. And again, I was a little disappointed that it doesn't auto empty. That's a base unit that I thought would auto empty, but it does force on a fan to kick everything over the side. And that actually does work pretty good. So here's the map. I'm having it do it an area clean. You can see it does show itself on the map. It shows the base station. The app works very well. Other than I don't, it doesn't really let you know about obstacles it encounters. And again, it doesn't remove the mop pads. It can only lift them up. And Miss Fiona is upset. She's wanting in. You can see it raises the mop pads pretty high. They are dragging on the carpet a little bit. So this robot is kind of like, it's a little different. How they're not, the technology that they're using is just kind of like, they want you to kind of like, it's automated. You don't really get into the weeds too much with it. They want you just to kind of press the clean button. It's going to clean, it's going to avoid things, and then it's going to come back to the dock station do what it it's going to clean the mop pads and once in a while it's going to tell you to empty out that thing so i consider this one more of an automated more of a just set it forget it put it on a schedule you're not going to get into like the roomba the j7 and j9 will actually take a picture of the poop this is not going to do that um the robo rock will at least give you and say hey there's an obstacle there the um, dream l20 and x30 they take a picture of the obstacle you can turn that on and off though this one just has it has a really nice app but i just think it's it, they just want you to just kind of like use it and not go too much into the weeds with it now see over here it's starting to get into trouble i should have you know i should have put a no-go zone around all these cables but i kind of wanted to see what it was going to do so i will give it credit it looks like it can get out of that mess see it just doesn't show you anything on the app See, I put a little no-go zone there, but not, not big enough, obviously. Yeah, I can't get over how quiet this thing is. So I have put some stuff on the carpet here. Now, supposedly with its technology, it can sense, and it should kind of go over that again. It did a pretty good job. There's a few small crumbs in the carpet. You know, for as quiet as it is, I think the vacuum actually works pretty well. Yeah, not too bad. Definitely really shines on hardwood floor. I, that, this thing really does shine on hardwood floors. I did think its mopping ability was really good. Okay, so we're getting to this middle section here where I've got a bunch of dirt and hair. hoping it would you know missing cables is really hard to do now dog so it didn't hit it there this will be the true test okay so is it going to avoid the dog poop boy it wants to no i don't it and yeah, does an okay job it did sense it it did kind of well actually that's not too bad of a job actually I would like for it to stay a little farther away, but that's not too bad. So now it kind of knows that it's there and it's staying a little farther away. Now it goes right around it. How can it do with a small cable? No, it's, it runs it right over. Yeah, it, it ran it over. Let's, while we got it, let's take a look. And then here's that dust bag. It's weird having it on the front. But everything goes in that dust bag. And then at, remember, at when it docks itself, it kicks on high air to move all this dust over to the side. Yeah, the cable did get caught in there. Now, I will be comparing it to the Dream L10S. Here, I've got the Roborock Q Revo S8 Ultra. Uh, I, got the, um, I got the Dream X or L20 and the X30 upstairs I'll be comparing it to also. I also do other vacuum cleaner reviews. Here I've got the Roborock Q5, the Eureka, the Roomba J7. Lots of videos on Tenecos. 
And back over here where, where the material was on the floor, it did a good job. It did struggle right here where the material was up against the carpet. Like the, I could tell the suction was kind of straddling the carpet and this, that it did struggle there, but and it didn't, yeah, it didn't get everything out of the carpet. But you know, this room looks relatively clean. And you can see how it changes color. That's how you know where it's cleaned. Okay, so here it's going back to the base station. I must say, it finds the base station rather well. It docks itself. I did have an op at one time where it kind of couldn't dock itself. I think that was in the setup. I have a setup video on this, how to unbox it and set it up for the first time. It was a little complicated, not too bad. I felt like the instructions could have been a little bit more detailed. Now you'll hear it kick a... I think it's going to kick a fan on. No. Here's the different things for the base station. We can go in and change different settings, add detergent automatically. Let's... Drying and disinfection started. I don't know what the drying and disinfecting is. Maybe it's just drying only? I don't know. Sh shows a picture of what it's doing. And again, if we go to the history, we can see this one, the area one. It doesn't show us any obstacles. You know, that's one thing with this app. Every time I try to zoom in, it... Now, maybe it, it's trying to... Uh, it kind of repositions it. It can be a struggle. So, yeah, see, it just... It's cause, so the app, with zooming in and out on the map, is a little finicky. Here's the details. Optimal route. Paused. Resumed. Yeah, it doesn't really say it found an obstacle like pet waste. Okay, so in my scoring, it was... It's hard to score this because it doesn't have auto MD, but it did get a B plus, 89 out of 100. I think it does a really good job with a lot of things. So again, I'll put a link to this in the show description notes. I am going to recommend this. Now, if you have hardwood floors, I'm definitely going to recommend this. It at least gives you a notification when it's time to change that, that dust bag or, your, or this bin. You're supposed to clean this out. So it does have this reusable one. That is a nice feature. Again, it just doesn't auto empty it. So this again reminds me after the setup, it's kind of like a set it and forget it, put it on a schedule. And I think it's just going to work for the most part. Um, again, it always found its way back to the dock. You know, if you got some things on the floor, it is going to kind of run them over, but it doesn't get too tangled up with things. And as far as base state, it does, it is, this is one of the nicest base stations. Now, everything is kind of hidden. You have to press the undock button or the home button to have the robot come out to do any kind of work on it. Again, yeah, just, it's, it looks, it looks really nice. I got to give them credit for that. This base station, yeah. And I think this was one of the best mopping ones. You know, granted, it does still smear it. It doesn't soak up, it doesn't suck the water up that it's mopping. So, but it actually did a pretty good job of mopping. You know, this really could be an A or a B plus. Again, they don't, they don't advertise that it's auto emptying, but they don't, you know, anytime you see a big base station, I automatically thought it was gonna auto empty. But I think that bin is big enough. You know, if, it's, if you have a big house with a lot of pet hair, this one may struggle. This one may struggle with carpet. So if your house has just a little bit of linoleum and a lot of carpet, these are, this is probably not the way to go. This is probably gonna be a, a, this is really a nice one for hardwood floors, linoleum, a lot of that. I think this thing really does shine. One thing, so the price point, $1,400, that's, that's pretty expensive. It should have, a, for $1,400, it should have, so I'm going to keep my B rating. It should have a little bit better obstacle avoidance for $1,400. And, you know, the, the Dream X30 and L20, they leave their mop pads back at the base station. That's the same price point as this. They have auto empty. Now they're bigger. They don't look as nice as this. This thing looks really nice. But the, the other ones do have a few more features that I do like better.
I could probably talk about this all day, but I got to do some more comparisons with it because that's when we're really going to find out. We're going to set this side by side with those, see exactly how it does. Be sure and check me out on Instagram. Look for my logo, Just a Dead Videos, on Instagram and Facebook group page. If you could, go over there and hit a follow. That helps me out. I do free giveaways there. When I'm done with these, I do give them away for free. I really do appreciate everybody's support. If you want to see more robot and vacuum cleaners, hit the subscribe button. And also, if you could, hit the thumbs up button. That helps out my YouTube channel. Again, underneath the video, I'll put a link. I bought this with my own money. Would I spend $1,400 on this? Man, it's, it's got to go on sale. It, $1,200, yes. $1,200, $1,400, no. So again, I really do appreciate everybody's support. If you could, please like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.